step over to the kitchen. <laughs> I suspect we're going to feel more than this. Like, can't fit any more in? What is that? Ooh. Big one. Ooh. That's a pretty big no, one, look. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Nasty you are. They keep a welcome in the hillsides of rural South Wales. But in 42-year-old Philip Smith Terrace... Come, come, come through, come through. That welcome is littered with formidable obstacles. This is the board that I put down for the... Oh, God, the rat. Philip's house boasts a living room, a kitchen, a bathroom and a bedroom, all swamped with boxes and boxes full of stuff. Fridge, barely used. Cooker over there is really old and really bad. There is actually under the sink, there is a new sink. That's been there for a little while and, yes, needs, uh, needs fitting at some point. This is my living room, which I haven't used in two and a half years, probably. Things just got to a point that it's not worth even being around. Here you go. On the surface, Philip has it all. He runs his own successful business, He's in a long-term relationship. He owns his own home. That's turned into a humongous hoard. Becoming a hoarder, it's something I would never have labelled myself as. Things were a little built up and cluttered, but it was an untidiness. Uh, it wasn't hoarding. This is the old bedroom. It's just... <sighs> I would love to use this room as a spare room again because I have had people over in the past. I have had people staying. There have been visitors, and, and, and it, this has been a very lively place in the past. But that happy house became a hoarded home after a major incident changed everything seven years ago. I had a stroke, and uh, I was unable to deal with things. I was running a business, and it was either look after the business or look after my house. And so things at home just mounted and mounted and mounted to a point where it was easier to ignore the things that were around me and to say, well, look, I don't need to use that part of the room anymore, which eventually goes to, I don't need to use that room anymore. It can be debilitating at times because it does knock your confidence. And though I can now give a real air of confidence and I'm happy talking to people, uh, in, my <laughs> in myself, I'm just not there. I'm trying to look at the positives of living in a hoarded house. <sighs> it, it, it's hard to find many positives, honestly. I'd be, I'd be stretching. Um, I, the positive is that once it's out of the way, I will feel so much better. To help Philip rise to the challenge, he calls in expert cleaners Debbie and Tina, also known as Nook and Cranny. Decluttering hoarders' homes is bread and butter to them. Well, he's clearly ready for change. Well, he's reached out. Which has, so got, to, yeah, which has got to be a good thing. Nervous. Nervous of what it's going to be like. Am I going to get it done in time? You know, I think... It, is Philip going to work with us or is he going to work against us? Is yeah. And when you're walking into the unknown as well, yeah. that doesn't help, does it? I am absolutely ready to do this and I can't wait to get started. Nearly 250 miles east in the cathedral city of Canterbury is this smart three-bedroom semi. Hi, I'll come in. It's home to 58-year-old Jan. Come through. Mother of four, grandmother of seven. She's lived here 20 years. Here we are. With three of her children having flown the coop, Jan is suffering from empty nest syndrome, although the nest is looking anything but empty. Crikey, well, lots and lots of stuff. And every cupboard is full, but to be honest, I've not got a clue what's in here. 
There's no room in the cupboards for food, but it's Jan's hunger for a bargain that's turned her lovely home into a cash and carry dumping ground. Just get that buzz out of buying things. I love going to the till, especially when I've got a bargain and she scans it and like, God, how many more of them are left? I say none because I've got them all. <laughs> the clutter's not confined to the kitchen. Jan's hoard has started spreading upstairs. This is spare room. I want this so that my grandchildren got somewhere nice to stay rather than all the clutter. Yeah. In the sale, just after Christmas, Boxing Day or the day after. This kitchen stuff that I bought to have with my new kitchen, I don't want it. I think the hoarding started when everybody left home and there was me, my hubby and my youngest here. I started buying more and more stuff. Jan's worried her youngest daughter, Ashley, has inherited the buying bug. As you can see, Ashley likes her things. Every drawer is full. That's full. That's full. Oh God, it'd be amazing to have a big declutter uh, for both of us. It's a mess. Jan's neighbour, Nina, knows all about her friend's fixation. Hi. Hi. Yep. If it's 10 pence cheaper, she would buy it just so she can have it. She just buys a bargain and then stores it up. Oh, Jan. It's a bit of a fire hazard, though. You really do need to get this sorted. I have never seen um, a house cluttered like this before. I go in and I feel claustrophobic for her. Jan and Nina agree. Come on, let's go out and I'll get a drink. The hoard has to go. Are you comfortable with this then? Yeah. Chuck everything out and you just, do you choose what you keep? I go through it all. I'm not going to be pressured. Mm. I need to be the one in control. I think she just needs that little push. So I think this would be good for her. It's got to the stage where I just want to go, phew, get, get it all out and get rid. And I know I can do this and I've got to prove to everybody I can do this. Coming up, Philip has some unwelcome visitors. That is a big one. Quick, before she changes her mind. And binning the bargains stirs up strong emotions for Jan. And I think Stop everything's it. getting like, so emotional right. the last couple of days. Bit of a long step there. Hang on, let's. That has moved a little, so let's shift it back. Seven years ago, Philip's house turned from a home to a hoard. This is something that got out of control, something that I couldn't handle, and it went too far, and then I couldn't deal with it. But I'm happy that, uh, that this is the right time for me to do this. Help is at hand in the shape of cleaners Debbie and Tina. Let's do this. But Philip's already having second thoughts. It's nerve-wracking. It, it's the waiting that's the problem, isn't it? In equal measures, they're, uh, they're a godsend and they are a, a horror. <laughs> and the worst part is you never know what you're going to be faced with when you walk through that door. No. So it's quite disconcerting. I'm looking forward to the outcome and trying not to think about the process. One, Philip, um, come in, have a look. God bless. This is the living room. Um, okay. You all right there? That's fine. That's nothing. It's a little bit outland, isn't it? Uh, it uh, yeah. I'm very, very grateful for your help. That's Thank OK. You. That's, that's what we're here for, you know? Ah, oh, there's an empty bag of rat poison. There has been rodent activity in here. It's an issue with the area. We're very right. close to the river. There's a lot of rats around. At the moment, it's quite overwhelming. We'll go through everything with it, because you have got an awful lot of stuff, so... Yes. If, we, if we're going to clear yeah. it, I think perhaps quite a lot of stuff is going to have to go. Are you ready I, for that? I I'll think so, yeah. That. I've become comfortable with... If I haven't seen it in a few years, then if I haven't touched it in a few years, why do I need it? It's obviously not... High five on that. <laughs> <laughs> High five on that. This is what I left to you. But Debbie and Tina have heard it all before. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Oh, no, they can try. I don't think Phyllis has been using this uh, tin. It's not functional at all, though, is it? No. 
I can't see it's anywhere not. at all here where, where that could you could prepare even, the meal. Where you could even make a sandwich. Right. At the moment, it's not a functioning bedroom, is it? No. There's some rubbish, there's clothes. Extra mattress, but there's that can there's go. A chair. Yeah, we need to be able to clear air to be able to make it into a bedroom. Yeah. Electric cables in the yeah, bathroom. That's Not ideal having electricity in the bathroom where you're having a bath instead of the water. Yeah, stairs are quite steep as well. Yeah. Yeah. Time for change now, isn't it? Yeah, I you know, think so. it, it seems to me that you're ready for this. I think so. Um, and yeah. you want to make the change, so yes, that's what we yeah. do. We we here uh, to help you do that, okay? Yeah. Yes. Sit on your sofa, and you're going to relax in a clear, clear space. <sighs> Can I give you a hug? <laughs> but will the loving survive when the clearance starts? Pens, they're your new ones, aren't they? At home on the outskirts of Canterbury, Jan is the queen of bog off. I just get that buzz out of buying things and I always think it will be useful, but it never is. But now she wants to get her house in order for the sake of 30-year-old daughter, Ashley. I think Ashley's actually got my old in habits, buying pens all the time. And I open them, Ashton, whether she's bought them the day before or not, Every shop we go in, she'll have to get a packet of pens. Jan wants to clean up Ashley's bedroom, activity room and the spare bedroom. So she's brought in the dust demons, sisters Yvonne and Angela. Here we go. I'm looking forward to what we're going to find in here today, aren't we? No, we never look forward to what we're going to find. No, we're looking forward to helping change people's lives. That's what we do. Apprehensive this morning. If the cleaners come in and started chucking without my knowledge, I'd be really upset. I need to be the one in control. Is this the first room that needs a little bit of organising? It's a little room with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Is there a yeah. table under there? I can't quite Let's see it see, at yeah. the moment. So this is your daughter's bedroom, yeah? Yeah. It'd probably be nice to be able to see the floor, get all this yeah. organised. Right, this is the other room. Oh, yes, <laughs> there's not a lot of room in here. So, Jan, when you buy all these things, are you buying them for people for presents or is it purely because they're a bargain? 90% because they're a bargain and then I always think, oh, somebody else might, yeah. might use it. For Yvonne and Angela, Jan's hoard presents a new kind of challenge. Here, it's not floor to ceiling rubbish. This is all bargains. But things are going to have to go. I don't know how Jan's going to feel when it comes to that crunch of letting go. It's yeah. so hard, isn't it? It's We're so good. hard. First things first, divide everything into three piles. So rubbish. Charity and things that you want to make a give to your Keep family. Keep for your family. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah. The clean-up begins. And you've got a rubbish bag. They're going to bin off the bog-offs one bargain at a time. No, oh, here comes no. the red sticker, 50p. Yeah, charity. that charity. Is this for charity? Yeah. The bin bags are filling up fast. I don't want that, that no. can go. Rubbish. Rubbish, rubbish. rubbish. She's proper geared up for this today. I think we've got her on a really good day. Rubbish. And she's happy with that because we're working together. Speed. Oh, look at the speed. She's on a roll. The team start on Ashley's activity room and beneath all the bargains, there are buried treasures Jan hasn't seen for years. Oh, your child health record, but... It's Ashley's, I think. It's Ashley, was it? Yeah, Lesser? I think so, yeah. It's Did you know Ashley was going to be born Down syndrome or not? No. I was tired all the time, but I put it down to having three other children and... Really? Being, like, so they never the picked fight. it up on any scans or nothing, anything? Nothing. Nothing at all. But I wouldn't swap her for the world. I wouldn't know what to do if she wasn't here, to be honest. Yeah. Definitely. And well, I think stop everything's stop getting... It. like. So emotional right. the last couple of days. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be all right. 
I need this. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, it's definitely. Not too much for you. No, not at all. Are you sure? It's the end of day one. Twelve bags of rubbish are heading for the tip. And the same again for charity, all from the ground floor. I can't believe that's come out of that little room. It's been a productive and emotional day. This morning I was sick to the stomach and then when we found the baby book about Ashley, that, you know, and a bit tearful, and that's when it all just came, came flooding out. Since then I feel a lot better and I know I'm doing this to make things easier for me and Ash. It's just mind-blowing how much I've hoarded. Absolute crazy. Jan's not the only one who loves a trip to the shops. 18 months ago, in Harlow, Essex, Bubbles' one-bedroom flat was full to bursting. I love clothes. If I live to 100, I think I can wear a different outfit every day. Is that nice? Bubbles shared the flat with faithful companion Maisie and her ever-growing hoard. I just love unusual stuff. Old-fashioned car. I love this rocking horse. Bubbles' hoarding got out of control when her mum died, so she spoke to bereavement counsellor Charlene. What does mum's stuff mean for you? I think at the moment holding on to it is because I don't want to let go. It's OK to let those things go because those memories are still going to be there. I think the grief you feel and the... the loss... I think that's why a lot of this has happened. So Bubbles bit the bullet. Good morning, lady. Good morning. <laughs> she brought in declutter divas Zoe and Alison to work their magic. I might finally know where my underwear is. They do say declutter your flat, declutter your mind, and I just feel so much more confident. A year and a half later, Bubbles looks back fondly on the experience. When I first met the Divas, I don't know what I was expecting, but it was just brilliant. They were so much fun. All right, you know, <laughs> get it up on me. <laughs> I didn't think they'd get it as tidy as they did. Before the Divas, the kitchen had been a fire risk. After, it was in pristine condition. The living room looked like a war zone, turned into an oasis of peace. Oh, my God. When they showed me the front room, I walked in, I went, oh, my God, I love it. I said, I really love it. But that was 18 months ago. Well, I'm mad enough, I should show you this one first. Since then, things have changed. Oh, I don't know, who put all this stuff here? In South Wales, it's D-Day. As much as we're going to start. Debbie, Tina and the team have come to give Philip's house a deep declutter. Right, make sure you got the right size now, mine's large. Medium, I am. With just three days to get the job done, they're going in mob-handed. Ready, guys? You're going to change my life? Yeah. yeah. We are definitely going to change your life. Change your Come life. on, then, let's do this. As the team start to clean, Philip is on hand to check every last item. Oh, it's the tablecloth. No, that can go. Netherlands, don't need that. Don't need that. Oh, now see, I thought there might have been something in it. There is not. You're already make, making massive progress, Philip. You're already saying this can go and that can go. Is wow. falling apart. Okay. Yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. I didn't right, know that so was we need happen. to get that bag there. We're going to clear the passage, bag the stuff up, get the bags outside so that when the skip arrives, we can just put the bags into the skip. Oh, my God. This is looking a touch dangerous now. That bit of floor's gone. Right. Have we got to allow that? Uh, well, this has to come out now, doesn't it? Because yeah. I, can't, I can't work around that, so that definitely has to come out. The clearance is literally on shaky ground. The floorboards are rotten. We're only a couple of hours in, and already we've been stopped in our track because we've just discovered the floor is, is, is coming apart. 
it's quite concerning because what we wanted to do was get in, get it done as quickly as we could. We are on limited time to get this job done, and yeah, it is quite worrying. I, 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 for the first time, I think I'm stressed. As the team tiptoe down the hall, it's time to tackle the living room. Another bag. Watch your head back. And it seems Philip has some unwelcome housemates. Some rat droppings and stuff in here, which would suggest a, a nest. Uh, the, a box there, as you can see there, yeah, look. You can see where this would have had food in there has been gnawed. So that would suggest there was definitely lives that so I might see you, yeah. So as we're getting lower down to the floor, see all the droppings? Yeah, I definitely think we're going to come across some lived ones as well as some dead ones. Yeah, I see nest, look. Do you see there's a massive, massive um, rat's nest here? Right. So it's the body of a rat. See the teeth? I knew I'd come across one. But that's nothing compared to this one. Enough is enough. Debbie calls in the cavalry in the shape of Jamie, the rat catcher. Fresh rat droppings on there. Fresh? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure they're fresh, fresh? No, they're definitely fresh droppings. There. Right, OK. And I'm here to deal with a rat infestation in the property. Be looking to see if there's any fresh droppings around the property, see if there's actually any ongoing activity. Holding is obviously, for rats, is ideal conditions because they can hide, they can nest amongst all the materials, and generally they can be out of sight. After a thorough investigation, Jamie's worst fears are confirmed. Heavy smear marking all over the house. We found a dead carcass, which has been there for a while. I won't put any more anywhere else, just in case you're moving things around. Let's leave it just under there for today. All right. It's a non, it's a non-toxic product anyway, so yes. I don't want if if anyone does it, do it. It's non-toxic anyway, right? We've placed four rat snap traps in the corner of the living space area, along with some rodent tracking dust. And yeah, we'll carry out some follow-up visits to inspect further. Oh, yeah, it's a bit more weighty. End of day one, and Philip is minus floor, but plus rats. Coming up. Time is running out in Wales. This is impossible. Kind of at the point now where I don't really know what, what else to do. Jan bins more bog offs. Leather boots, there you go. She is the best bargain hunter I've ever seen, I think. She needs to have her own TV programme. And the grief behind Bubbles hoarding. This is so much, and I felt it was the last straw. Robin, rubbish, charity. In her three bedroom semi in Canterbury, Yvonne and Angela are helping Jan clear her hoard of bargain buys. Here we go. Can this go in the rubbish bag? Yeah. Hoarding started when everybody left home. So I was buying more and more stuff to actually compensate my empty nest. She is the best bargain hunter I've ever seen, I think. She needs to have her own TV programme. 45 <laughs> down to 20, leather boots, there you go. Never seen so many red stickers. Never seen so many buy one, get one free. And reduced to this, reduced to that. She loves it. So far, they've concentrated on the hall and activity room. Now it's upstairs to tackle Ashley's bedroom. Do you want to put the lid on? Here you go. You want to put the lid on for all your pens? All nice and tidy. Hairbands, Ashley likes hairbands. It's coming together, but it could also easily fall apart if Jan doesn't tackle her shopping habit. That's it, wow. If I see a bargain, whether I want it or not, I will. It depends how big a bargain it is, I will buy it. 
and I won't just buy one, I will buy three or four. Compulsive shopping is an entry point for many hoarders. Today, cognitive behavioural therapist Christina is hoping to help Jan break the cycle by changing the way she thinks about shopping. So, do you have an understanding of why you have so much stuff? To a degree, a lot of it because I was getting it reduced price and knowing that I could actually go in there with a pound or whatever and come out with loads of stuff made me feel quite good. And I know that you grew up, you didn't have a lot growing up. No. And do you think that's part of it as well? As... I think so, not having, like my mum, she was on her own, bless her, and she did work and we was fed every day, but no luxuries, nothing like that. So is this linked to that, do you think? That Maybe, you know? okay. yeah, and knowing that I can buy it because it's, it's cheap so that I can buy it and I ain't got to feel guilty by, by buying it. Your children have left home? Yeah. Do you think them leaving home made you want to kind of fill the house? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. When my son left, I got quite uh, like down because even though I've got Ashley here and my husband, I felt quite lonely. And I did go to speak to the doctor and he said it, it's like empty nest. Yeah. Yeah, so... So do you think that... these things are, are filling your yeah, nest? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So there's a lot, isn't there? There's the children leaving home mm. and, and the empty house and the empty nest syndrome. And there's the growing up without a lot of stuff. Yeah. And perhaps now being in a position to have a lot of things. Yeah. And then this yeah. need also to give things to other people. Mm. So how are you going to break all three of those? I see how nice the finished room is going to look. You know, be proud of now how it is and what I've actually um, achieved myself. Because it's, like I said, I'm going to get emotional. I mean, it's taken a lot mm -hmm. to actually get me to do what I've done. Yeah. I think you should be proud of the changes that you're making. It's a huge life change, isn't it? Of course, yeah, definitely, yeah. Whether or not Jan can maintain this change really depends on a lot of things. I think the difficulty will be one day if she's feeling a bit lonely or a bit sad and she's walking past a shop and they're having a sale, what will stop her from going in and buying things? Changes easily, but maintaining change is really hard. In Essex, Bubbles has struggled to maintain a clutter-free lifestyle. 18 months ago, her Harlow high-rise was spotless. Now she's had a relapse. It's a bit of a dumping ground. I just started buying again, you know, that little bit of happiness for that moment. Leave it in the bag, put it down. It was the death of her mum that first sparked Bubbles' hoarding. And now she's suffered another loss, the death of her beloved Shih Tzu, Maisie. I mean, she was my rock. And when she went, it was quite sudden. Sorry. I just miss her so much and just talk to her all the time, you know, and things like that. Always cuddled up with me. And, you know, to lose her, I, I felt it was the last straw. Maisie's death sent Bubbles down a familiar path. I started buying things, made me feel a little bit happy, started getting in a mess, but then that was getting me down again, you know, so it was like, I've got to get out of this again. But she's not quite back to square one. The living room holds the hoard, but the rest of the flat is still clear. Kitchen's tidyish and clean. I've sorted out all the cupboards and stuff, you know, but I think I've kept it pretty OK. This is my bedroom. I've kept it as tidy as I can. And I'm really proud that I've kept the majority of it clean and tidy. Maisie's death hit Bubbles hard, but she's determined to bounce back. You walk into this clutter and you're like, oh, I don't want to get like that again, you know, because it just drags you down so much. in Wales, it's day two of Philip's Deep Clean. And the house is starting to be revealed. It's so close to what it was before the stroke. And that entire skip is what's built up in the last seven years. We know any uh, done. No, but no, I mean, well, this, is, this is only the one room, isn't it? What was it? done yesterday uh, yeah. has made a massive difference, hasn't it? Huge, yeah. 
So today, Philip, if you don't mind, um, Tina and Becky is going to go downstairs and make a start on the kitchen, if that's OK with you. Fantastic. Know? And there is quite a lot of stuff in our bedroom we've got to go through, isn't there? Yeah, I think hopefully it should be a really, really quick job and a, and a fairly easy one. <laughs> Can I just say, we could barely get in this living room on the first day. If you all put your arms out like this now, look at this. Unbelievable. I know. I know. Should, we, should we spin? Look at this. Spin. Yeah. Come on. Wow. <laughs> right, thank you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Well. Um, he uses this on a daily basis. Yeah, he did say he's neglected it a little bit. Do the grease. Right. Top shelf. Guys, please don't take this as a row, but we've still got quite a bit to do down here. So, guys, can we just give it one final push yeah. and get this done? The clearance isn't halfway through but already Philip's feeling the pressure. So, what's the plan with this bedroom then, Philip? Right, well, there's quite a lot of stuff in here. My plan is, I know there's clothes in here. There's clothes that I wear in here. And, right. uh, and, and so, I, I've already done some sorting. You don't need to touch the bed, really, what's on it, because I can make sure this is clear before you come here tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Oh. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to push you. <laughs> Just, I, I, this is me panicking now that I'm go, gonna get this done in time. Don't panic here. <laughs> That's right, go. All right. <laughs> I'm feeling rushed now because Deb is being frantic. This is impossible. I'm kind of at the point now where I don't really know what, what else to do because he wouldn't let me touch our bed. It's difficult because he's saying he can do it by the morning, but if it's not done, then our room's not going to be completed by the time we finish. Yeah. Tensions are on the rise. I'm sounding really short-tempered to no, me, and no, I'm no, not, no, I promise listen you. No, listen now, listen now. Honestly, no, that's not how you're coming across at all. <sighs> I, and I understand your frustration. I'm just feeling quite rushed, and, uh, okay. and, and, I, and I can't answer all your questions. If a few things have to sit around, they have to sit around. If you can find somewhere to hide them, right. hide them. Do you want to just... <laughs> do you want to just go outside and take two minutes now? What I want to do is get all of the cleaners downstairs if we can. Right. I just want to have a quick chat. <laughs> The team assembled downstairs. Is this their marching orders? Right, now, we've been talking about storage space. I do have... This was... Right. It belonged to my great Aunt Audrey. If you open it up, you can see what's in there. Oh. Oh, you're going to make me want to cry now? <laughs> We've never so, had donuts off anybody oh, before, so, we guys. Oh, thank you. I'll take my glove off now and I'm going to have a plane. You've all been so fantastic oh, this week. Oh, my God, thank you. I wasn't angry, I'm just flustered. I know. I'm I, not... I, I, everything you've done is amazing. All of you, everything you've done is amazing. It's an emotional roller coaster, isn't it? Yes, oh. and, and I, you know, I wanted to show my appreciation just with something little and... Uh... Do you know what? That's not something little, that's something massive. <laughs> like, and you really have choked me up here now. <laughs> Get your chops from Derby. Mm. Nice. Love it. Everyone wants to buy mules. Can't have it, it's mine. In her flat in Harlow, Bobbles has started hoarding again after the death of her dog, Maisie. Well, I lost her. That was it. It was like... I didn't care again. Maisie's death left Bobbles sadder but also a little bit wiser. There's one thing I've learned about this process is grief affects me in such a way that I want to hold. 18 months ago, bereavement counsellor Charlene helped Bubbles come to terms with her mother's passing. This is the front room. <laughs> Today, she's back to check on her progress. How does it make you feel walking in here and seeing all the items that you've got in here? Not very nice. How did it get back to the state that it's currently in? For Maisie, it started again. You know, buy something and put it there, be all right, I'll sort it out later. And I haven't. And a few odd things that I've found that I probably need to get rid of, but I've just left it there just in case. 
you know. When we're focusing on the just in case, that's when we're not keeping ourselves in the present. You know, we're thinking way ahead, and when you're thinking way ahead, that's when anxiety yeah. creeps in, so you're not keeping yourself in the present moment. Yeah, you're right, actually. But there are some signs of hope. The hoard hasn't spread to the kitchen and bedroom. Do you feel like you've moved forwards or backwards? Oh, definitely forward, and it's definitely afterwards. It was all forward, 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 but then the minute I lost Maisie, that's when I went back. But I feel like I'm going to definitely carry on going forward. As long as nobody else dies, I'll be all right. Which is why I said to be aware of those triggers for you. And once yeah. you are aware of those triggers, thinking of alternative ways that you can deal with it. I'm just wondering if you're in that headspace now to tackle the living room. I think I can, yeah. And once you have done that, do you think you'll be able to keep on top of it? Yeah, because I love this feeling of the room I'm sitting in is clean and tidy. Yeah, I think I will, yeah. I feel like Bubbles has made so much progress. She's very self-aware of the triggers for her. So I feel like she'll be able to get herself out of the hoarding process. Despite the clutter, Bubbles is also feeling positive and she makes herself a promise for the future. It'd be a shame to go back to that, and I don't think I will, because it's not a nice place. It's just not a nice place. I did let myself slip, but I will get that all done. It might take more time than somebody else, but I'll get there. Coming up, Jan makes some tough decisions. Peter Andre. No, that can go. It's amazing. And Philip looks forward to a hoard-free future. I could be very comfortable here. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and that's what we wanted. We wanted to give you that. And, um, you know, it's been hard. <laughs> but yeah. we got there in the end. I've got to be brave. I really have got to be brave. In Canterbury, Jan's having a clear out, and there's no room for sentiment. Peter Andre. No, that can go. She wants a house the grandkids can visit and daughter Ashley can feel at home in. This morning when we'd arrived, she'd already got the curtains down in the room we were sorting. She's even more ruthless today than she was yesterday. But after years spent hoovering up bargains, can she put temptation behind her? Do you think when you next go to a discount store, you're going to be tempted to buy things? Definitely not. No. I nearly did the other day. Discount store's just opposite. And I thought, no, don't, so I never. The floors are clear, and it's time for the finishing touches. Ashley's activity room was full of bargains from floor to ceiling. Now it's neat, tidy, and buy one, get one free, free. The utility room was a jumble of bags, boxes, and impulse buys. Now the cupboards are clean and the surfaces shine. The spare room was more like a storeroom. Now it's spick and span and ready for the grandkids. Let me see what you think of this room. Oh, wow, it's amazing. <laughs> Where is everything gone? <laughs> it's all gone. Wow. When we looked in here yesterday, we didn't see any floor over there. The grandkids wow, are going to be fighting nah. over this. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to cry now. Oh. Big time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Don't you. start me off again. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. You all right? Yeah. Stop crying. Oh, no, I know. But I know you're happy. I know you're happy. Oh, yeah. I am. I know happening. you're happy. One person's itching to see the finished rooms. Jan's neighbour Nina's come for a butcher's. I am so excited considering what it was like. I really do hope she has managed to chop half the stuff she actually don't need. Blimey! That is magnificent! It's well, really I can't believe it's the same room. I know. You've got a room, Jen. No, I know. Yeah. Right, isn't it? No, I ain't filling it up. No. Yeah, no, I'm not. See Ashley's bedroom? Oh, yes. Ooh, come yes. on. Then. Ashley's been having trouble sleeping. Jan hopes the new clutter-free room will provide a more restful space. Look at this. Whew. 
Absolutely. Oh, God, how big is this room now? Oh, I know. Oh, I bet sure she does. loves it. She can sleep now, can't yeah, she? Yeah, definitely. She's got and nothing crammed up. A lot, Moved a lot her bed pen. as well, haven't you? No, 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 no. That was. Oh, that's how yeah. much junk you had then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've done a good job, Jan. No more bargains, okay? okay? You're to keep it like this, and I'll keep oh, an eye yeah. on you. Yes, definitely. Every week. Yeah. Well, I tell you, what, I'm amazed. I really am amazed, and truly, am shocked. It's just what she needed. So proud of her for doing it, to be honest. I'm glad Ashley's got her room back and the grandkids coming. It's going to be amazing, really, really amazing. I'm getting young teary again now, <laughs> Yeah. Really, really good few days. I have done a massive thing in it, a massive, massive thing. In Wales, Philip's great clean-up is almost complete. Here we go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's taken three full days, three cram-packed skips, and a lot of reassurance. Brilliant. That's it now for your bush girls. Come on, we got this. Yes! We've come to the end. Yep. Oh, it's been a roller coaster. I mean, that's all I could say, really. There's been some ups, some downs. But we pulled together and we got the job done, you know. Um, I'm really, really proud of what we've done. Debbie, Tina and the team faced a formidable rat-packed horde. Does that look any better from down there, back? Yeah. Well, it's done. Take a look. Wow. There have been times the task seemed almost insurmountable, but now the results are there for all to see. The living room was a living nightmare. Now there's a room to live in. It looks like home now for it, doesn't it? I could be very comfortable here. Yeah. So, and, yes. and that's what we wanted. We wanted to give you that. And, um, you know, it's been hard, <sighs> but yeah. we got there in the end. The bed was a no-go zone. Now the hoard's gone and there's fresh sheets on. The house has been transformed upstairs and down. The kitchen was a potential biohazard. Now it's as clean as it's ever been. I can't do a round of applause for you, but I will. No. Oh, okay. yeah, no, no, guys, give yourself no, a round of applause. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Our thank absolute you. pleasure. Thank oh. you. Coming from where we were a few days ago to, uh, to now, to barely being able to get in any room, to what we've got now, it's an incredible change. We've made it look cosy as well, haven't we? We have, yeah. You know, we've it's given him... lovely, you know. we, we, We're really extremely proud yeah. of ourselves and our team. <laughs> the best of us! Oh. <laughs> the best of us! You can see what we've ended up achieving yeah. at, the, at the end of a very, very tough, tough and week. challenging week. <laughs> yeah. You've done such a good work. <laughs> such a good job. So yeah, absolutely. So, guys, this is us. We're yeah. done. Let's get out of here. Yeah, Thank you. Do Do enjoy it. Bye. Bye. nice that it's over. I'm feeling a lot of relief. It's been a really good week and it's put a lot of really good energy into the space and I can't wait for people to see it again.